Hi, this is Julia Fulgham. I'm the director of Advance at UNM. Today I'm going to help you think through some strategies and tips for preparing your promotion dossier. I'm going to start by covering some fundamentals that are relevant for any level of milestone review and then have a couple of slides specific to preparing a promotion dossier. One thing I can't emphasize enough is to talk to your department chair early and often. Departments have their own expectations and you want to make sure you are aware of these before you start preparing your dossier. Also, please keep in mind, I'm going to use the term research to encompass research, scholarship, and creative works. You've spent a lot of time making decisions about all aspects of your career. And it's important to realize that you get to make a lot of decisions in terms of how you tell your story and what goes in your dossier. This is your adventure story. There are expectations from your department, your college or school, and the university. But this is your narrative, and you get to think about what you want the narrative to be. It's important that from the start you understand the expectations of your department and college or school. Some useful links are shown here. When I made this recording, the provost office did not yet have the 2021 P&T or promotion documents posted, but they're gonna be similar to this past year's with one exception and that is, as we'll discuss, you can write about the impact of COVID-19 in your research, teaching, and service statements. Arts and Sciences has a lot of useful documents up that step you through various aspects of this process. And regardless of the college or school you're in, you may find those useful. Not all colleges and schools have documents posted, uh, for example, Libraries, I know, has theirs on their intranet, and the College of Fine Arts goes by department policies rather than having a college policy. So make sure you're familiar with the policies you need to be. There are actually two different aspects of dossier preparation that you need to think about this summer. One is the part you're probably already thinking about, which is writing the research, teaching, and service statements. The Arts and Sciences standard CV format also requires summaries of each of these. These are the more creative pieces of the dossier, and so you want to work on them when you're really feeling like you're inspired and motivated to get them written. People frequently struggle with these pieces, and they're the pieces we're going to discuss the most. There's a separate administrative component, as in there's a lot of organization and finding of information to do as part of the RPT software. The RPT software is what you will use to upload all of your dossier information. And what you'll find once you start to look at that is there's a lot of specifics like um, defined file naming process, a specific format for your teaching evaluation. So you wanna work on these pieces during the summer rather than leaving them to the last minute. But they can be things to work on when you feel like you need to make dossier uh, progress, but you're frustrated or just too tired to think about it. So you can kind of iterate between these two and make progress uh, all summer. To effectively tell your story, you need to know what the expectations are from your department and college or school. Everyone needs research, teaching, and service statements. The Arts and Sciences CV format also requires one page total summary of these. Most departments expect dossier statements of about three to five pages. And honestly, committees outside the department at the college or school level and the provost committees are not going to be able to read statements that are much longer than that, just due to the sheer volume of work that they have. You may have already had to prepare your research statement for external referees, but if you haven't, you might want to talk to your department chair about whether you should prepare a separate, potentially more extensive research statement. 
The reason to do this is that you can have more technical statements that go to external referees than you would want to have for the dossier that's going to be reviewed internally. Departments have different approaches to this, uh, so talk to your department chair. The other thing to think about is it can be helpful to have brief summaries of your teaching and service experience as part of the information going out to external referees. This provides the context for them in which you've been doing your research. The School of Engineering limits statements to two pages and all faculty appointed after 2012 in ANS have to have a teaching portfolio. One difference this year is that you can write about the impact of COVID-19 in each of your statements. While for most of you, COVID-19 has provided a real challenge to your research and scholarship, many of you have been doing really heroic work in terms of getting your course material online and helping students. And you want to be able to write about this. How has this impacted you as a teacher and as a faculty member? Are you thinking about our students differently? This is your opportunity to explain what this has been like for you. And the ability to write about it in separate statements means you can perhaps write about it more positively in your teaching and service statements while addressing obstacles that may have come up in your research statement. Once again, make sure you're talking to your department chair and you are aware of college and department expectations before you start writing. Once you know what the expectations are, then you want to figure out what your narrative is going to be. Are you a rabbit or a duck? In general, committees want to say yes, and you can help them get to yes by telling a good story. And keep in mind, it's much harder to write a concise narrative than a long one. And so you want to give yourself time to do this. Sometimes, regardless of how accomplished faculty are, they can sit down and try and start staring at the screen to write up accomplishments and go, uh, I don't know what to write. Boy, this determines my future. I, I don't know, I don't know. Have I done anything? I think I've done things. Have I done things? And if you have one of these or one of the many other reactions that are possible and that can provide some obstacles to your writing, Deep breath. You are, in fact, good at stuff and things. You do have accomplishments. And if you're having trouble coming up with them, a couple of ideas uh, here to think about. If you've been documenting your accomplishments all along the way, well, go through them and start to list those that might be the most significant. If you haven't been, pull out your annual reviews, any other review letters, and start to think about your accomplishments. I guarantee you have some and start a random list. Don't worry about the scope or size of the accomplishment, just start a list. And then once you've got the list, you can go back and identify the significant pieces. Talk with a friend who knows your work and can help you brainstorm this or join a dossier preparation group in advance and we'll help you with this. The goal is to have a list of three to five things that you want to emphasize, things you're happy about, proudest of, think are the highest impact, think are the coolest. And these are things you want to make sure you include in addition to anything that you are expected to include. And this is then how you start to develop your story. Now let's talk specifically about applying for promotion to professor. Depending on your department, you'll need to provide between five and eight names of potential external referees. Half the people contacted will come from your list. You've probably already been asked for names, but if you haven't, you should go ahead and talk to your department chair about this soon. Close collaborators can't be external reviewers. There are two sort of general exceptions to this. One of your in a field like physics or astronomy where the norm is to have literally hundreds of co-authors on a paper and then conversely if you're part of a very small research community. If either of these are the case you should discuss it with your department chair. 
Collaborators can provide letters of support which go in the supplemental documents section of your dossier. This can be helpful if you're part of a big multi-institution project or doing community-based or community-engaged research. In these cases, letters from collaborators can highlight your accomplishments and make them more apparent to the dossier readers. If you choose to get letters of support, make sure you point to them in your dossier statements. Normally, this will be from your research statement, but it could also be from the teaching or service statement. You've probably already been asked for the research summary for external reviewers, and if you haven't, you are likely to have it due soon. As I mentioned earlier, people frequently take a slightly different approach in their research statement for external reviewers compared to the one that will be read by the internal committees. If you have a gap in your accomplishments since you were promoted to associate professor, please know that this is pretty common. Don't worry about it. You can address it with a couple of very concise statements and then move on to discussing your research or teaching or service. If you need help with this, please consult me, other members of the advanced leadership, your department chair, or associate provost for faculty success, Bill Stanley. Keep in mind when preparing your research statement that it is going to be read by faculty committees outside of your department. The first paragraph, or a couple of paragraphs, should help the faculty outside of your area appreciate the importance and context of your scholarship. What's your motivation? What are your goals? Are you asking big questions? What impact have you had on your field or what impact do you hope to have? You can frame your research statement about whichever of these questions helps you think about presenting your work. Most of the statement should be about what you've done either since tenure or maybe during the last five years. As I've said before, don't worry about it if you've had a gap. You do also want to include some information on what you are planning to do moving forward. If you've had delays or setbacks specifically in your research, this is a time you can constructively address it if you think it's important to telling your story. You can mention works in progress, but you want to make sure that you refer to them accurately in terms of their current form. Your research group, graduate student mentoring, accomplishments of graduate students you have mentored can go here or in your teaching statement or both, depending how you choose to write about them. As with the research statement, keep in mind your teaching statement will be read by faculty outside of the department. The class names and course numbers aren't going to mean much to faculty outside of the department or outside of the school or college. What level are your classes? Are you developing new classes, teaching core classes, classes that are required for the major, graduate classes? Let people know who your audience is. What do you do to successfully engage students? How does this vary by the type of class you're teaching? Are there areas where you're trying to improve? Have you recently learned things that have surprised you? What do you want to try next? Most of your teaching statement is going to be about things you've done, but you should also take advantage of the opportunity to let people know what you're planning to do. If you've had any issues with your classes or you know, found adapting to remote instruction for COVID-19 to be particularly challenging or rewarding, then this is a good time to talk about it here. Any time you are mentoring students, whether they're from your own department or classes or other departments or classes, you are advancing the educational mission of UNM. This is a contribution to student success, and you should write about it in your teaching statement. 
If you're doing pedagogical research that you didn't talk about in your research and scholarship statement, you can talk about it here. Any pedagogically related articles can go here. And as with the research statement, you can talk about work in progress. As an associate professor, you've probably done a lot of service on a range of different levels. So don't just list the committees you've been on. That's going to be in your CV. Pick a few types of service that you've done that you find most interesting, that have had the highest impact, or made a contribution that's important, and write about those. And think about all levels of service that you've done, the department, at the college or school, maybe university service, in the community, and in professional organizations. And provide at least one example from each of those, and what you've done, and why it's been important to you. This is particularly important for promotion to professor. There are a range of administrative details to keep track of while you're preparing for your dossier. These are good things to work on when you want to make progress but don't feel like doing the writing. If you haven't already talked to your department chair about preparing your portfolio, you should do so and make sure you're aware of all the department expectations. Some departments want to see a draft package before the final dossier goes out to the faculty. So find out if this is the case and what the timeline will be for submitting your draft documents and the final dossier. If you haven't already talked to your department chair about what will be sent to external referees and when, then you should go ahead and do that now. If you haven't been tracking your student committees, service assignments, accomplishments, then you should go ahead and start organizing those now because you should also be updating your CV, which will require all of these. You don't want to be scrambling to find details at the last minute. If your CV is supposed to be in a specific format, then make sure you work on that sooner rather than later as well. It is expected that you'll have some peer evaluations of your teaching since you were promoted. If you haven't had any, then go ahead and talk to your department chair about arranging them. And also think about whether or not you can get peer evaluations from colleagues that perhaps you have co-taught with or guest lectured for. And finally, you'll be submitting your dossier to the RPT software, and that has specific file naming formats. So go ahead and get that information, start finding the files, for example, the student evaluations of your teaching that you need, and make sure they are named correctly. And that's the basics. I hope this brief presentation has been helpful. Don't hesitate to reach out to your colleagues, your department chair, advance at UNM, or associate provost for faculty success, Bill Stanley, when you have questions or need help. Be safe this summer and take care.